Kara here from Homestead How. Today on the Homestead, I'm going to tell you our plans for the winter, how we support our homestead, and I'm gonna do some experiments cooking outside on the smoker. Not just steaks, I've got this pot roast meat I'm gonna to try to smoke up for the first time. Abby Dua. <laughs> I got the smoker going at 225. Now I'm gonna go inside and cut up my ribeye roast. Look at that beauty. Would you look? Are you looking? That is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna cut that up to about inch and a half pieces. Firewood, firewood, firewood. We never get caught up with firewood. And the homestead is starting to look like a parking lot. This is Emma's new car. This is Lily's car. When I say that, people are probably like, oh, must be nice. They all paid for their own vehicles, 100% with their own money they earned. That red car is Emma's car from her ice cream money, from her ice cream job. The black car is Lily's car she saved up from working on our dog kennel. Now here's our firewood. I cut up a whole bunch of this ash last week. And when I was in Canada, look what Emma and the girls did. Started stacking. All these are gonna get split. Those are gonna get split. Now, the thing is, I have a gas splitter. will be really really cool. We're doing it now because we have to get some winter. We have, <laughs> we have to get some wood for winter. And just because it's summer it doesn't mean we, we're gonna use it now. Abby Dua. <laughs> but the carb keeps clogging up on me. I have so many issues with that thing and it's huge and the girls can't handle it that well. I also have a little electric splitter a friend of ours gave us, and I've never used it, but when I was by Maggie in Canada, they were using an electric splitter. That's all they used. It's a little small one, but it gets the job done. I'm gonna bring out that electric splitter, and I'm gonna have the girls start splitting this up. We got a whole bunch of rain today, so I don't know if I'm gonna be cutting this up today, but that's my next step, is to cut more of this up, and then have it split. Some of those don't have to be split, but all of these are gonna get burned in our indoor Amish cook stove. This year, this happened, we've been here eight years. There's been one other year when I didn't use the outdoor wood burner. This year is gonna be the second year I didn't use it. I'll leave the pumps running. I got antifreeze, or I, I got corrosion inhibitor and water in there, but if the pumps run, they won't freeze up. I hate to do it, but I just didn't keep uh, caught up with firewood this year. 
I'm so far behind. But I'm still going to heat the house with wood using our Amish cook stove, which amazingly heats a good part of the house up. It keeps the house pretty darn warm. Much more so than our old wood stove that was just a small wood stove. This thing is such a big heat mass that uh, it really heats up the whole house. It even gets the back rooms warm. There's just something about wood heat. It heats you from the inside. It's a different type of heat than propane or natural gas. That wood heat heats your bones up. There's something to that for sure. All right. Let's check on these guys real quick. It hasn't been very long, but we got so much rain last night. We got that thing heating up pretty good. These are just starting. My probe is at 51, so I'm gonna go in the house. I'm gonna get some work done and I'm gonna keep an eye on my phone. My phone will ding me when that hits 120 degrees. As you can see, we've hit 120 degrees on the probe. It just gave me an alert on my phone. Time to go transfer some steaks. All right, we got this thing going, but it's not hot enough yet, so we do the trick. Oh, I forgot to open the top. You open the top, you open the bottom. That one's gonna take longer, that's the big roast. Had a whole bunch of rain. You see the puddles down there? But the sun just came out and it is a beautiful day today. Probably one of the last beautiful days we're going to get in a while. Might have to chop up some firewood later when Emma gets home and the girls get home. Let's see what we got this up to now. Oh, there we go. We've doubled it. We were at 150 before. We're at 300 now. sizzle. Two at a time. Close it. Hold on to the hand of self-destruction. Come back to a place that left a long time. So give me a second. on your plate when you need to 
Welcome to the homestead. Every Thursday at four for like six years, I do a homesteading video or a movie theater video or a family vlog video. Last week we cut up some firewood. I had some people that watch my homesteading videos say, I'm so sick of the carnivore steak stuff. Well, it's true, I do a lot of carnivore videos, but I do no less homesteading videos. I've done a video every Thursday at four for six years now, and that has still happened. Last week we did one on firewood. So today's video, I wanna talk about the homestead Kind of hard to see here, but over there, the leaves are turning yellow. It's fall. One big thing that's happening this year is every year we've heated our entire property with firewood from our property using our outdoor wood burner. We aren't doing that this year. I'm cheating this year. We're going to use our indoor Amish cook stove. Uh, we had it for one season and I love that thing. And we're going to keep our outdoor wood burner off simply because I was lazy and because I didn't get enough firewood built up because I've been so busy working on carnivore diet documentary uh, traveling around the world filming people for that so that's one big thing we did that one other year of the eight years we've lived here and I'll leave the water pumps running and we're still gonna heat with a ton of firewood we got some really good ash uh, but we're just gonna do it with our indoor Amish cook stove which we can also cook on and which also heats up our water in terms of how we support our homestead I get that question all the time I'm so fortunate and blessed we've been here for eight years I've never had to leave to seek outside work um, it's not a traditional homestead in the, in the sense that we're not growing uh, our own vegetables. Don't do any of that anymore. We're not raising any meat. We do have chickens and eggs and we've got some goats, but we're not selling beef or uh, livestock that we raise. Not yet anyhow. Uh, but we do support ourselves entirely from our homestead. And the first thing we did was our Airbnb rental, which is behind me over there. It's above our garage. It's an apartment. We fixed that up after we bought the property. This property was a huge fixer-upper for anyone that's new here. They see the property, they're like, oh, must be nice, Mr. Rich Guy. Uh, this place, I think we paid $150,000 for eight years ago, 20 acres. It was a mess. Like 100 people looked at this place and didn't want to touch it. It took us a year just to make the bottom livable. We put in the, the hard work to make it livable. Uh, but the Airbnb is where we lived when we first moved in, and that wasn't even livable. The tile was all cracked, and the floor was disgusting, and we've since fixed it up. So we support our homestead through our Airbnb rental. We've got someone up there every weekend, and in the summer, it's booked up most of the summer. Then we built our off-grid dog kennel. My dad helped me with that. Jen and I built that, along with my dad, and uh, it, it holds four dogs, and we got a lot of Airbnb guests that want to bring their dogs. And then we have just the general public and neighbors that bring their dogs over when they go on vacation. We don't breed dogs. We don't sell dogs. These are just people that love dogs like we do that want to go on vacation for a week and they need someone to watch them. We take the dogs through walks through these beautiful woods. We send them lots of text pictures. We go above and beyond. We under promise we over deliver. That's the second way we support our homestead. Third way is this YouTube channel. Been doing homesteading videos for eight years. A couple of my videos took off. I got one, how to reuse your firewood ash. It's got like four million views. So we get money from those YouTube videos. The other way we make money is Jen has her own YouTube channel on creating crafts. Another way we make money is through our Amazon influencer business. Uh, this, oh, wrong way. Still learn how to operate the camera. That red grill you see there, someone sent me that for free. Everyone says it must be nice to get free stuff. It's not really free. I have to do a ton of video and photo work and put hours and hours of my time and thousands of dollars of camera equipment that I built up over the years. This gimbal I paid for with my own money. This camera is our Netflix approved camera, but the lens and a lot of the accessories and the microphones and all that is all stuff I paid for myself. We do Amazon influencer videos. People will send us stuff like that red grill. I'll do a video and photo work and then that'll go on Amazon. And then people that are interested in buying that grill can watch a video of it instead of just seeing a static picture and that will be my video. Well now if they watch that video and then they purchase that grill, I get a little tiny commission. But it really adds up and the, and the quantity of sales that Amazon does is incredible. So it builds up pretty quickly. That's one of the biggest ways we've been making money um, over this last year. We also uh, go to rummage sales and auctions and buy stuff and flip it. Haven't done that in a while, but we still have stuff stockpiled. A lot of the Amazon stuff we get, we get for free. I say free loosely because it's a ton of work. Everyone's just like, oh, you get all this free stuff. We got an e-bike 
couple e-bikes, but the last e-bike we got was free, but I had to do drone shots and video and photo work. I'm not complaining, but it's not free. Like if your job was to dig ditches and someone said, here, I'll give you a shovel for free. You just have to dig the ditch for 12 hours. It's not really a free shovel. You had to dig the ditch for 12 hours. It's kind of a similar thing here. I'm so thankful and blessed for it. Uh, that's our other business. Um, buying, flipping stuff, reselling it is another one. Katie and I are starting an e-bike rental business. We haven't done that yet, but we built up a stockpile of e-bikes, a lot of them that we did videos for. What else do we do? The movie theater. It's been over a year. We purchased our small town movie theater. We haven't taken a penny out of the movie theater. Just like the carnivore diet documentary I'm working on, some people might be watching saying, oh, you're making all this money off of that. I see all those donations coming in. Every single penny for the carnivore diet documentary, we've raised almost $100,000. Every penny is going into the doc. It's extremely expensive. The camera that we had to get in order to get on one of these big streaming services, very expensive, along with the lens and everything else. Took a big chunk out of a lot of that money. And then traveling to film all of these people with a professional crew and a sound guy and an audio guy, that um, almost $100,000 we got is gonna be gone very quickly. We're so fortunate because we have all these good doctors that agreed to participate in the documentary. We have like seven or eight of them, but we'll have to individually go and film each of them. That's going to be very costly. So I don't make a penny off of the movie theater. I shouldn't say that. The movie theater is profitable, but every penny we've gotten, we put back into the building this year. We haven't, Jen and I haven't paid ourselves. Neither have the girls. The girls get tips. And then every now and then I'll take them out to dinner or treat them out of my money, out of my own pocket. Um, Carnivore Diet Documentary, I don't make a penny off of that. Every Super Chat, every GoFundMe, every t-shirt sale, all the salt shaker sales, those all go towards the documentary. But I do make money off of my um, backlog of YouTube videos I've done on homesteading, so that's cool. And I really enjoy doing those things. So that's how we support the homestead. The Airbnb thing is really cool. It makes way more money than we ever would have thought. When we had that apartment up there, we thought we would just rent it out, like at a, a one-year lease or something like that. Like People could come and pay, you know, $800, $900 a month and stay up there and sign a six month lease. We make way more money than that on Airbnb. And oftentimes it's just somebody in there for the weekend and they're gone. And then all week, like right now, no one's up there. I go walk around here in my underwear. Believe me, I do that a lot. Uh, especially when it snows out. I like to take my shoes off and walk around in the snow like a, a, like a crazy wild person. Um, and I don't scare the guests that way. In winter time, there's just people up there on the weekends. Summertime, they're there all the time. So that's kind of the big homestead update. The biggest news is not having the outdoor wood burner going this year, but we are going to be using the indoor wood burner and dialing that thing in because there's an oven on it. The cooktop's really easy. I think I've mastered that. We haven't mastered the oven yet. I'm going to roast up um, like a pot roast and some turkey and some meat in there, maybe a meatloaf or something like that in that oven. Uh, other than that, the other exciting thing is a company reached out to me a while back about bringing a wood processor to the property. This is a full blown firewood processing machine. You dump a log in one end, it chops it up, it goes down a little conveyor belt, it, it splits it up and it just spits out the cut wood on the other end. And I was going to do a video with them showing, they make these in America, in fact they make them in Wisconsin. I was going to do a video showing off a local business that we could support um, while also just making a fun YouTube video. How much, can I, can I cut enough firewood in one day to last me one year? Typically we go through over 10 cords of firewood here, but it's usually kind of junky firewood. Now I got ash, I think it's gonna stretch a little bit longer, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm reaching out to that guy. I'm trying to um, set up a time when I can come film that. So that'll be in a future Thursday video. We'll get some awesome drone shots and we're gonna really put that thing to the test. We're gonna start the timer in the beginning. We're not gonna cheat. We're gonna see how much logs we can process through that thing and how many cords we can output. Hopefully we have a big stack and we can fill that huge outdoor uh, woodshed that Emma and I built up uh, pretty quickly. That's the tricky thing with firewood people don't think about. You need enough for two years. You need to have wood sitting there drying out for the next year. If I use all the firewood we have this season and I run out and then I cut firewood all summer and then I fill it back up, it doesn't really count because that wood isn't necessarily dry. You guys are probably sick of seeing me smoke steaks up, but if you're new here I'll show you real quick. This is my method. I smoke them in here. This is my Yoder smoker. I smoke them at around 225 until they get to 120 internal temperature. I use a Bluetooth thermometer. It dings me on the phone. Once it hits 120, I take it over here. This is my little Komodo Joe. This thing is fantastic. This thing gets so hot and then I sear it. Um, I just sear them 
for a couple minutes on each side and that brings them up to a nice medium rare temperature. Now the ones that I eat today, I cook that a little, I cook that to medium, medium rare. The other ones I cook rare. These ones are all rare right here. Why? Because those ones are going to end up in uh, the fridge and I'm going to eat one of those tomorrow and one the next day and one the next day. And I'm going to end up putting them in the air fryer to bring them up to a temperature so I don't eat them cold. Although I do enjoy them cold too. But those are going to air fryer and they're going to cook a little bit longer. So that'll take them from rare to medium rare where I like it. I have perfected this. It's like a science and I love this thing. This little Komodo Joe is fantastic. So these ones here are finished. Those are the ones I'm going to eat throughout the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then I got this big roast going, which I don't know what's, I don't, I've never tried this before. I got this from Costco. It's two big roasts. And I've got one of them going on the slow cooker for like 10 hours on low. And then I got this one going. I'm going to do a little taste test later and see which one tastes better. Oh, the other power tip move is this. Get yourself a rack. You let the steaks rest on a rack. If you rest the steaks on a cutting board, it's gross because there's a fly on it. If you rest it on a cutting board, all of that heat comes in contact with the board and it pools out, it sucks the liquid out, and then all of those juices start dripping out. You cool it on a rack, you get some juices that drip, but it's a lot less drippage. And then when you go to rest it, which it's doing right now, it's resting. When you go to cut into it, it's nice and juicy. So one of these I'll eat today, and the others I'll eat on the subsequent days. Stove is messy, everything's messy. Are you telling me your house isn't messy? Is that what you're telling me? I don't think so. I am allowing the steak to cool for at least eight minutes. And you know what takes me just a couple minutes? It doesn't take me eight minutes. I'm frying up a couple eggs. I love eggs. This is, uh, this is some really good stuff here. This is Wagyu beef tallow. Wagyu beef tallow. While the phone's ringing, boom. It's a little power move. Pull a little water on the lid. You really gotta watch it when you do this or it'll, it'll over steam it. So tempting to flip them, but I think I'm gonna leave them. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. All right, I'm not going to lie. I overdid this one. Darn it. This was one of the thinner ones, though. I think the other ones are going to be okay. It's still, it's still medium. The camera never does it justice, but this is not medium rare like I like it. This is medium. And part of it is the meat turns pink when you smoke it. So that throws it off a little bit too, and then part of it is whatever the camera decides to show it at, but let's give it a try. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so good. I still got that pot roast smoking, and I got one in the slow cooker. And you better believe I'm gonna try one of those later. This is a beef chuck pot roast. 
came in two identical pieces, one, two. This one I slow cooked on low for 10 hours. This one I smoked for, I don't even know, a couple hours. This one is way more tender, it's falling apart. This one smells amazing, it's got smoky flavor. I don't, I don't know which one's gonna be better, I really don't. Let's cut a couple bite sized chunks off and see. This has a consistency of steak. The texture and consistency of steak. Let's see if I can focus on that. Tastes like a ribeye. Hmm. Oh, I like that. This tastes like a smoky ribeye, but a little fattier than a ribeye. Oh, it's so good. It's very tender. It smells so good, too. You can see the crust I got on it, the bark. I don't know. This is gonna be so tender. This is just falling apart. Mm. My goodness. I don't know what I don't know. This is fantastic. It's completely a different ball game. This is more pot roast. It's so tender it just melts in your mouth and falls apart. This, I guess this depends on what you're in the mood for. This is more like a steak or a ribeye. I think this is the winner. This is fantastic, but this is more for a steak preparation, in my opinion. It's a little too, too much fat to make it enjoyable like a ribeye. Man, if you didn't have that and you just ate this, you'd be very happy with this. It's not chewy either. I don't want to make it seem like it's chewy. It's just, of course, more chewy than that when it falls apart. It's not chewy at all. It's... Man. I almost can't tell the difference between this and a ribeye for some bites. I'm going to prepare this both ways going forward. This is my preference. If I'm smoking up a bunch of meat, I'm going to throw it on here because this is a close, close second. Pot roast wins slightly.